In the world of art, there are countless fascinating shapes to explore. One particularly captivating shape is that of the human eye. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to develop your fundamental drawing skills and go from basic to realism in drawing an eye. With its intricate complexity and fragile beauty, the eye has played a significant role in artistic expression throughout history. Not only will this fundamental of arts tutorial help you draw better eyes, but you'll learn how to check for accuracy of your portrait drawings if you're tracing your drawings. By the end, you'll be on your way to understanding how to create a stunningly realistic eye, taking your drawing skills from basic to brilliant. Who wouldn't want that? So let's dive in and have some fun. Start the sketch using a drafting pencil with a 2B lead. I'm going to lay out the eye in a pencil sketch. I have a rectangle that I've already set up and I've got a horizontal line through the center of that. I placed a vertical line right in the middle of the rectangle and I plotted out where my iris was gonna go. The iris takes up one half of the white area of the eye. The rectangle setup is for the eye length and height. When tracing, these are things you can check for in your own drawing. I believe any method to get the artist from point A to B is fantastic, and tracing is a time-honored method. However, it's important to know that tracing does not necessarily mean you will have a good drawing. Having some idea on basic fundamental skills is always a good thing. I'm placing the basic shape of a triangle in either end of the eye to draw the shape of the eye. Check your own eye reference for where this is, but typically the outer eye is one third to one half at the corner overall height, and the inner eye is baseline to one fifth up. I'm drawing in the iris as a circle. I want to get this as round as possible. Typically when an eye is resting, the iris is covered by the upper eyelid and just above the lower eyelid, you can see the full iris. This is because the eyeball sits slightly up in the eye socket. I'm going to use my ruler to check for accuracy of the iris circle and I always make sure that the iris is drawn correctly. Very quickly, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed and also if you haven't, please consider subscribing and liking. This really helps my channel grow. The final step in doing this basic drawing is joining all the basic shapes together with a closed line and then shaping the inner eye. Remember, always look really carefully at your subject and observe the structure. If you're working from a tracing, doing a quick check with basic shapes is a fantastic way to assure you've got it right. I love that. No more wonky eyes. Each portrait you do can be checked each time. I never rely on just the trace image if I'm using one for final drawing. Checking things twice is a good thing and this method can be used for any subject, not just eyes or portraits. And that's it, there we have it. The basic structure of the eye is complete and we're ready to start adding in the color. I'm working with the basic set of 12 polychromos colors from Faber-Castell. These colors are rich and vibrant and one of my most favorite pencils that I use. They blend well and are very transparent, allowing for great multiple layers of colors. Also working with the Zest It from Pencil Blend, M&R Pencil Sharpener, and a white pencil from Caran Dash or Prismacolor, and a Prismacolor Colorless Blender. You'll find the color number and pressure number above. As with all my drawing, I use a pressure number system when layering my colors. One is a whisper just touching the paper. Two is writing pressure. Three is just a little bit more than writing pressure. And four is quite a bit harder. You wanna make sure that you preserve the transparencies. You don't wanna to go too hard throughout your whole drawing. At this point, what I'm doing is I'm using the dark gray and I'm outlining all of the graphite with the dark gray. I'm gonna come in with a kneaded eraser and I'm going to erase all of the graphite. Keeping the graphite on the drawing muddies the colors. So I want to eliminate as much of the graphite as possible. I'm coming in with black over the pupil and I'm going to add a pressure of one, so I'm going quite light. And then I'm gonna add a blue, a very light blue over the full iris. I'm coming in with an eraser at this point and I'm just removing a little tiny bit of the blue. And I'm gonna come in with yellow and I'm gonna start adding that as an accent towards the center of the iris. I've got the black right now. I'm gonna be using it to do some shading underneath the lid of the eye and also around the iris a little bit and add some accents. And then I'm gonna come in with the darkest gray that I have and doing along some edging. And that's very typical for a lot of eyes where you see kind of a dark gray edge. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit on the blue side. I noticed at this point that the pupil of the eye wasn't quite in the right place. So I needed to erase it and then just move it up a little tiny bit. So that's what I'm doing right now. And it's okay that you do this. And I have a little battery powered eraser that's going to help me to do that. 
I'm adding in the black over the pupil again and I'm going to come in with the yellow just to fill in the area that I erased and I'm going to grab the orange and at this point with the orange what I'm doing is just building up a little bit of the colors and it's really okay that it looks a little bit messy and not very finished at this point. This is just really all about layering. So I'm adding in some black and the black is quite a bit harder now. So this is coming in at about a pressure of three. I'm continuing to use the black again at about a pressure of three and I'm building up all of this shading underneath the eyelid and adding a lot of detail on the eye. So there's a lot of little tiny fine lines on the iris of the eye and I'm putting that in with the black, building up around the edges of the iris and making sure that my pencil is nice and sharp. So every time that you see my hand move away, that's because I've sharpened my pencil. And generally I sharpen my pencil about once every 30 seconds. I've got the dark blue right now. And again, I'm coming along the edge of the iris and building up that area of the blue kind of gray black along the edge of the iris towards the white of the, of the eye. And again, this is quite typical of a lot of eyes where you're going to see this kind of blue tingy look. And after that, I'm coming in with the ochre and this is at a pressure of about a two, uh, just to add a little bit more of those fine details on the iris. As you see, it gets built up. It's going to continue to have all of these little fine lines. And I'm using the ochre also to come in underneath the eye, just to add a little bit of color. Because we have a limited palette, we just have to do a lot of layering and mixing of different kinds of colors to get the color that we need. I'm bringing in Scarlet Red at a pressure of two right now. And you can see that I'm adding some little tiny fine details. I'm adding it in into the little area of the inner part of the eye and that's called the caruncle. And there's all sorts of little kind of crevices and dark areas in there. So my pencil is very, very sharp and I'm making sure that I've got some really, really fine line details. Adding a little tiny bit of veining on the eyes and just coming in with, again, a pressure of about a two to add some shading on the underside of the eyelid. So in this area, what I'm doing is I'm using the black at a pressure of three. Again, you can see that I'm building up a lot more of the details of the iris. Again, it's looking quite messy at this point, but I'm gonna be jumping between the black, the dark gray, and the magenta very, very quickly in this section. And again, it's just jumping between different colors that I'm working with just to do some layering, adding some shadows and some shading and making it look a little bit more three-dimensional. So here I am with the magenta and just building up a lot more of the color. And again, because of the limited palette, this is what we have to do. We have to work with a lot of different kinds of colors to get the color that we want. So typically that's pretty normal for color pencil work where you're working with a lot of different colors to build up on a particular color, it makes it much more visually interesting. We're gonna be working with the green. This green is a bit of an accent and then coming back in with the magenta. And the magenta again is just to build up a little bit more of those colors and mixing them with the, the black and the orange and the green really helps to kind of tone that magenta down a little bit. And then the black is again being used to create much more accent. And you can see that it's starting to look a little bit more three-dimensional on the inner part of the eye. So I've decided that I'm gonna have a bit of fun with this eye and I'm going to put two complementary colors together, this blue and you're gonna see some orange. So some fairly dark orange and some dark blue, both of them coming in at a pressure of about two and lots and lots and little tiny fine lines and details. And typically eyes have all of these kind of interesting ins and outs and crevices in them on the irises and we don't actually notice until we look super close at them. So again, lots and lots of fun. And then coming in with the black along the edge again and continuing to build up those little tiny fine lines. So make sure that your pencil is super sharp all the time. Coming back in with the dark blue and jump between the dark blue and the black. And look at that black, just kind of really layering it on and making it much darker. 
So this is an interesting part of my drawing. I don't use OMS very often. This is Zestit that I'm using. I like this product a lot. What this product does is breaks down the binder, which in this case is an oil binder on the polychromos, and it makes the colored pencils into a little bit of a liquid. And so you can see that it's actually pushing the color quite a bit into the tooth of the paper. That's what the objective is. Generally, I like to use the tooth of the paper and not use a lot of solvent, but anything that is quite shiny like an eye, I will use a solvent. And I think it's quite important because it has a very different feel and look to it. So I added some ochre on top of the solvent. And the interesting thing about working with colored pencil on top of solvent, it has a tendency to really absorb the color that's, putting, that's being put on top. And typically it does look a little bit darker. So I was going in with a fairly light pressure and then adding in some black underneath the eyelid again. So this is really making it a lot darker and the solvent is actually making the colors a lot darker. At this point, I'm using the colorless blending pencil from Prismacolor. That's the one that I really like the most. And I'm really blending in the colors together so that I'm trying to eliminate the tooth of the paper at this point. It's quite important. And coming in with the black again and adding some green on top of that and some light blue. So just jumping around around a lot and I'm using a little bit of graphite pencil just to highlight some of the lines on the eye and you can see that it's really starting to build up some really cool detail and a little bit more realism. So you can grab your ochre at this point and I'm working at about a pressure of two and just doing a little bit of lay down and also a little bit of graphite work and coming in with the black to add some more details and the black is going to be at a pressure of about three and you can see that my pencil is very sharp so just keep reminding yourself just keep sharpening your pencil make it nice and sharp and that's going to help you to create those details. Here I am working with the ochre again and going over the magenta and back on the iris to add a little bit more realism to the color combinations that we're working with. So again because we have a limited palette so we need to introduce a lot of different layering to kind of get the colors that we need. So I'm working on putting in some details of eyelashes that are part of the reflection and that's pretty typical of most eyes. You're going to see the eyelashes from the upper eye coming in. I added in some magenta and then I put in some yellow and coming back to the black and adding those details of the eyelashes in the reflection. I'm working with the 232 at a pressure of 2 right now and that's a medium gray and generally the white part of eyes even though they look white they have a lot of shadow cast on them and I use a gray or a light light blue sometimes to create a little bit of interest and dimension. I'm continuing to work with the black and adding those details along the edge of the iris and a little bit on the white part of the eye. So you can see that my pencil is very sharp and then I'm going to be just using a bit of that blue. So we were talking about blues, adding that to the white part of the eye. Again, that's just going to help to create dimension and coming back with the black and doing a lot of just shading and making sure that it looks three dimensional. You have to keep remembering that as you're working with your colored pencils, you want to go light enough. So even though I am giving you pressure numbers, those pressure numbers still require me to be quite light and to make my drawing transparent so I can add more layers. And visually, it's a lot more interesting. I'm layering a dark blue over what I've done so far. And then I'm also going to add in a green on top of that. And visually, I'm just blending it all together. Now I'm working with the blending pencil and I'm just mixing all of the colors together. On the inner part of the eye, I'm working with the black, the magenta, the dark gray, and the red. This is going to help me to build up visual interest in this area, adding in shadows and making it look more three-dimensional. So I'm working with the ochre right now and it's just to add a little bit more visual interest and to blend in the color of that skin around the outside of the eye and adding in some blue, then that blue is just gonna help to tone things down. And again, trying to mix colors from our limited palette. Thank you. 
The iris of the eye still needs to be developed, so I've put in a dark blue at the beginning and then just adding in some of the red and putting in some white over some highlight areas in the eye and different parts of the eye. So just using the white as a blender and also working with the light blue and popping in some green just to highlight the areas on that iris, just bring out those greens a little bit more. I'm going to start working with the ochre and the walnut brown right now over the skin and I'm going to be putting it on at a pressure of one. This is going to be very light at the very beginning but then I'm coming back and I'm blocking in the shadows and starting to build up the darker areas with the walnut brown. This area I want to develop some of the folds and the wrinkles of the eyes so I'm starting to put in the ochre on top of the walnut brown. Using the light blue is going to help to tone down some of the oranges in the ochre color and remember that light blue and orange or the ochre color would be complementary colors of each other so they kind of neutralize each other out. I'm adding in magenta over the ochre and the walnut and again this is just to help to develop the skin tone because of the limited palette. So just kind of keep remembering that. You can do remarkable things with a very limited palette and still make things look very realistic. For the next section I'm continuing to add in the ochre and I'm going to work with the walnut brown and a little bit of black also. So just kind of refining these details on the skin texture and building that up with some walnut brown adding some shadows in and continuing to just blend it all together and putting in some black again I typically don't use black when I'm working with colored pencils but because of the limited palette that I have I am using it just to help me to build up some of the shadows and it's a little bit of blocking in so I'm actually using it more for blocking in than for anything else. So I've got a lot of browns happening with some black so I'm going to come in with the red and I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of red in certain areas and also with the gray and the dark blue. Again those are going to help to emphasize things like veining and the way that the contour of the face is going in so the blue is really helpful for that and actually just helps to tone things down and just coming in with the ochre and continuing to build up the different shadows. I'm using the white right now more as a blender than anything else and then just coming back in with the ochre and the black and continuing to build those shadows and a little bit more detail and working with a racer and some white just to get a little bit of the highlights happening. This is a white marker that I often use. It's from Faber-Castell and it's a pretty good white marker. I like it uh, quite a bit and really just kind of refining a little bit of detailing, adding in some eyelashes and the eyebrows just to finish the whole thing off and just remember when you are adding in eyelashes you don't want to make it look too spidery so you want to create different lengths and if possible different thicknesses also with your eyelashes and put some gaps in there and just to finish it all off I'm working with my favorite white ink to add in my highlights and there you have it thanks so much everyone for joining me I really enjoyed this tutorial